studio. <laughs> you will see from uh, looking around here it's a very small studio. One hand on the wall there and the other hand can touch the other wall there so you can get an idea of the scale that we're working in here. Um, I've got another camera set up here. Well I say another camera. Let's face it what I've got is I've got another phone and another phone. I've always wanted to do this. I've never done this method before. So it's something new to me. I, I've done one or two videos of me actually painting, but I, mostly it's time lapse. And this is going to be something different. I have wanted for quite some time to actually do a live painting demonstration and show you what I actually really get up to and talk to you and talk you through it at the same time. I've been watching people do this on YouTube for ages and I've always wanted to have a go myself uh, and I've toyed with the idea of setting up the cameras similar to the way they are, maybe setting up another one somewhere to do time lapse at some point, but actually being able to show you what I do. Please excuse the hump. And if there's any strobing, please excuse that too, because I am working, well, it's dark outside, as you can see through the windows, and I'm working under a fluorescent light, a cool fluorescent light. I'm just going to turn the lights off and on again. This is a strange thing, but... It does stop them humming. So, if I do that occasionally, it's, uh, it's not some kind of technical fault. It, it's, uh, it's me. Right. You can see the setup here that I've got. Actually, I think I've got it set up. Yes, I have got it set up so that actually on the screen, you can see me on this little screen here that uh, I'm using to actually record myself look talking to you like this. Um, you can see the painting and you can see to some degree the tablet that I've got up there that I'm working on, working from, sorry. Um, I hope you can actually see the painting clear enough to see what I'm actually doing. What I've got here is a 12 inches by 16 inch board, MDF board, 6mm MDF, so it isn't going to warp. Um, it's had a couple of coats of gesso and I've drawn out the basic map, the basic structure of the painting. It's not detailed. How much detail goes in in the end, that's up to me. But it isn't a detailed drawing because I'm going to cover it all up. But what it's there for is to give me a map and as I draw it out, to give me a chance to analyse the picture. Now, we're on lockdown. We've been in lockdown now for quite a few weeks. And to be honest, I'm quite happy to be in lockdown and uh, to still be alive and to still be safe, as I'm sure many of you are too. But of course, we can't get out and paint. And so we're painting today from this picture, which is a picture by, uh, that was taken by my friend Amber, who put it on Instagram last week, and I saw it and I thought, now, if I was painting outside, on plein air, that's where I'd like to be. So, I said to Amber, I said, can I paint the photograph that you put on? And she said, yes, of course you can. So, here we go, that's what we're going to do. Now, the photograph gives me a different image than if I was sitting there with the sounds of the water pouring down over the rocks and the feeling of the breeze on my face and all that sort of poetic stuff. It's different. Plus the fact that the photograph is framing the image. 
Whereas if I was sitting there in real life, it'd be everywhere. And I'd have to sit and make a choice and make a decision. The decisions that I've got to make working from the photograph are different. For one thing, the photograph, and I'm pointing up here as if you can see it, I don't know whether you actually can. And I realise, looking at this, that you can't actually see any detail on there. So what I'll try and do is I'll point it out on the main painting and then maybe I'll edit in some shots of the photograph to go along with it. You're going to have to put up with these technical edges. This is an experiment. I've never done it before. What I've done is I've taken the opportunity, while I'm drawing it out, to look at what's important to me in that image. That's the point. It's important to what, it's what's important to me that matters because there are loads and loads of different ways of doing a painting, aren't there? You could look at that image and you could see things in there that were important to you that would be different to the things that are important to me. You might want to flatten the plane in, in the same way that Japanese prints used to do and a lot of the impressionists sort of tried to adopt. Or you may want to go off full on deep perspective. It's up to you. So what you're going to watch here is what I choose to do. And what I choose to do is I choose to take this opportunity when I'm drawing out to look and find the planes in the painting. We've got a plane here I see horizon at the top. You can just see the sky through the trees and the horizon's coming down. Then there's another path here coming down and crossing and coming back here. I think it's a path. It's hard to tell. It could be where the stream's coming down. It doesn't really matter. For the sake of this picture, it's a plane and there's another plane there and very nicely there's a, a log lying down here that's fallen down uh, which is delineating that plane even more and then of course we've got the water coming down here over the rocks we've got the trees here we've got some more rocks some fallen leaves and all that sort of thing that's what's there it's basic there's not a lot there but then again there could be too much if you decided to really go to town on it so what i've actually done is i mapped out the basics and where you can see it hatch here, when you can see it scribbled in, hatched in, what I'm putting in there is the dark areas. The dark areas that are going to allow me to actually get the depth into the painting first. These are going to be the deep darks. And what I'm going to do uh, now, well, let's start. I'll tell you what, I'll start putting some paint on. Down here, though you can't see it at the moment, I have my palette laid out. I've got basically most of it's alkyds. I've got four alkyds and I've got two oil colours because, no, actually five alkyds, including white, and two oil colours. I like to work with alkyds or at least with oils mixed with liquid when I'm working like this because working fairly thick, it can take a long time for that, for just pure oil paint to dry. So working with the alkyds or working with the liquid alkyd medium speeds up the process and allows me to get more immediate with the work. So let's put some paint on. We've got lamp black, we've got cobalt blue, we've got a gen an, an ordinary oil burnt umber because I'm running out of alkyd burnt umber. Uh, we've got uh, terra verte, raw sienna and cadmium yellow. This is what I'm going to call a lockdown palette because it's not necessarily the normal palette that I would work with. But I've run out quite, of quite a lot of colours. So this is what I'm using and this is what I will use as we go on. So what I'm going to look at first is I'm going to look at the dark areas and I've just got some lamp black here on the, uh, on the knife and I'm just going to put in a limited amount, just a small speck here and there of where the dark areas are going to be. Now, 
they're not that dark but as I start to add colour over the top and start to maybe add a bit lighter colour in here and there it's going to give me the deeper areas that I'm working with on the tree here we got a patch there that's really dark we got an area here that's darker and there's a hole in the tree there's another bit there and some more coming down here it's not exactly the same shapes that I'm seeing at the moment it's just basically roughing in where those dark areas are and getting some depth in that's it where I want it to be because I working this way I can I'm going to be putting layer after layer after layer of paint on so at the moment we don't need to be mega accurate as much as we need to try and keep it loose and that's one of the most important things that I'm finding with this or with this method of painting that I'm using at the moment is I'm trying desperately to keep it loose if any of you have been following me for uh, the last few years you will have seen me do quite a lot of watercolours because that's for quite a few years that's mainly what I was doing and you will have noted that my watercolours are really quite detailed quite tight I would say and After a while of doing those watercolours for uh, so long, I got to the point where I was getting really quite, quite sort of fed up, quite tired of doing so much detail. And I realised that the paintings that I look at, the paintings that impress me if I walk into a gallery they're not those fine detailed ones that like the ones I was doing the ones that impress me the most are the loose ones the the expressive ones the ones where you can see the paint and the paint tells the story And so a few months ago, maybe almost a year ago now, I started experimenting in ways of loosening up my painting and painting the paintings that I want to paint rather than paintings, and I think there's a lot of people guilty of this and it's an easy trap to fall into, rather than paintings that I think might sell because in the end, you never know. And it becomes rather mercenary. There's a tendency, I think, when you say, right, I'm going to be a professional artist, to, um, to start worrying if you don't actually sell a lot of paintings straight away or whatever and the tendency is to start saying oh what will sell what can i paint that'll sell because i need i need to sell <laughs> um and yes we do we need we, we need to make money we need to be able to survive just like anybody else though i'm not you know there's an awful lot of people that seem to understand that but um there's that tendency to start looking and saying, right, okay, I want to, um, I want to sell paintings, so I've got to paint paintings that people will like and 
paintings that will please people and you sort of get, get yourself down a one-way street that you can't get out of after a while because you're painting all these paintings and they're not if you stop looking at it and working it out this is what happened to me you realize that you're not painting any more paintings that you want to paint paintings that you feel are important to you but you're painting purely and simply in the hope that people will buy your work and so i decided that i change tack and i paint the, for a while at least the paintings that i want to paint the paintings that i feel are important and hope that other people are going to like them enough to want to hang them on their walls so that's what I've been doing and it's been a, a strange slow journey because for quite a while I've been working under the basis that these paintings being so different from what I was doing before and being so much looser than I was doing before these paintings needed to be seen in the flesh to be in really experienced rather than um, just little photos on the internet so to work that out and to work through that I started to try and build up a collection I went out and he went out and bought myself a table saw so I could learn how to make my own frames cheaply and frame them which I've been doing making frames to put them in with the idea that I would then approach galleries and say uh, actually would you be interested in representing me would you be interested in selling my work and all the rest of the stuff that we have to do to try and sell paintings uh, and I hadn't done that for some while. I've been working exclusively online uh, with the watercolours. And um, so that's what I've done. And I put together these few paintings thinking, OK, I'll take them to a gallery owners and see what response I get and all that sort of thing. And I was all ready to go and do that. And then along comes coronavirus and those nasty Covids, as I keep calling them, and everybody in the house thinks I'm daft, but um, basically all that was had to go by the by. And all of a sudden, the chances of putting paintings in galleries seems to be an absolute thousand years away. And so you gotta start thinking differently, haven't you? You gotta start thinking creatively. And then along came the artist's support pledge, which I found online. A friend of mine was putting her paintings on, doing it. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll have a go. So I just decided to put them online and see if people liked them. And so far, I've sold a few. So I'm rather chuffed because I feel as if I'm in some way, all of a sudden I'm painting paintings that I want to paint, paintings that I find Um, that, that to me are that? there that's it paintings that to me are really well paintings that I feel passionate about let's put it that way I'm painting those paintings 
and putting them out there saying, do you like them? And people are going, yes, I like that. I like that on my wall. And, you know, it's... Uh, after months and months of wondering whether I was doing the right thing, I'm starting to feel that maybe... Maybe I was doing the right thing, I'm doing the right thing, whatever. Starting to get a, a feel for for the shape of things in this painting now. Um, I know I'm sort of rambling on about other things rather than painting, which is, I hope it's um, not too uh, boring, I suppose, but there's, there is a limit to the amount of things I can say about putting dark paint onto a board with a palette knife. But, I was, oh yeah, I swear that all this start? <laughs> How did I go off on down that track? I know, I was talking about why I'm painting the way that I'm painting and the fact that I'm trying to keep everything loose. There we go. And make it so that make it so that I basically I'm trying to stop my natural inclination to I'm not going to say overwork because I don't think my paintings are overworked but to include an awful lot of detail and when I first started to paint after a long break back in the 1980s I had, I found I had to I had to teach myself how to paint I don't know if many many other people have found the same thing but when I first got interested in art, it was at school. We had a fantastic teacher come to the school, Mr. Simcock. Frank Simcock, his name was, but I didn't know that back then. Teachers didn't have names, did they? Uh, they were just Mr. This and Miss That. Um, and uh, so when I... And he was, he was fantastic. He really was a, an inspirational teacher. And I spent the last two or three years at school just in the art room nearly all the time. And... Um, He taught us all sorts of great techniques. He was, he was a fantastic, inspirational guy. Um, uh, you have to excuse me if I stop talking occasionally when I'm concentrating on a particular part of the, the scene. But, um, no... Frank Simcock, he was a wonderful, inspirational man, and he really got us into interested in art. Uh, and then I went on and went to sixth form, and I studied art at sixth form. And again, it was great to be honest. I, I, I they challenged us. We used to paint from the model two or three times a week, and they pushed us. They made us try different techniques that took us out of our comfort zone and. 
or that sort of thing, which I always thought was a really good way of doing things. Um, and it was an art education. I was really glad that I had. Uh, I then I went to went to college to do a degree in drama and art, and spent another eighteen months before I dropped out and went to work in the theatre instead. Uh, and I spent quite a bit of time painting and doing art there. And then time went by, and for years I didn't paint. I was too busy. And the only thing I painted in all those years, I painted a six foot tall cornflake box for a pantomime, and that was it. Uh, then in the 80s, I, I'd had enough of the, all the theatre work and the long hours and all the rest of it, and I decided I wanted to paint again. And I realised at that point that nobody in all that time of doing art Nobody had taught me how to paint in watercolours and nobody had taught me how to paint in oils. And so I had to start again from scratch and find my way, find my particular interest. And find my own technique and my own style and all the rest of it. Now that takes time. And during that time, I did a lot of experimenting. I worked in watercolours, I worked in oils, I worked in acrylics, I worked in pastels, I worked in all sorts of things, mixed media, just trying to find my way. And um, eventually, I worked my way around to watercolours and And oils has been my two, two main things. And I experimented a lot with knife painting. I sort of really took to knife painting. Uh, and then for some reason, once I got into the watercolours, I ended up forgetting it. And uh, it's been great after all these years to finally pick up a knife again and try and try my best to do these paintings without actually picking up a brush. Not that I don't like painting with brushes, I do. But this way forces you to Stay loose. I don't know if anybody's still watching. I'm bambling on here. I've been going for half an hour. I'm to goodness knows how big the files are here. Uh, I'm uh, doing, but as you can see, the what I'm doing is I am laying in. As I lay in the dogs, I don't know whether you can see a picture emerging, but. What matters, I might suppose, is that, um, is that I can. And I stand back a little bit. One of the things about working in this studio is it's so small that you and you can get, you can get very wrapped up in what you're doing. And the tendency is not to stand back and as anybody will tell you that is something that you really want to avoid because stepping back is the only time sometimes that you really see what you're doing. So I'm going to pause for a second and step back and have a look at it. See what I'm, what I'm doing here. Is it coming together? Well, you know, I 
I think it is. I think I can actually see um, see the picture emerging. I think I've got to the stage now I think that will do for the for the blocking as it blocking in really uh, blocking in whatever you want to call it blocking in blocking in with the with the very dark paint I can always add some more later um, I'm going to pause the video here and take a little time to sit and look at the painting and um, let it let it form itself in my head that's uh, that's as important as anything else I think rather than just keeping going putting more and more paint on if you don't spend the time to sit back and take a good look at what you're doing then all you've done is just thrown a load of paint on there's got to be some thought in there isn't there otherwise you you don't really know what you're doing but I'm quite happy with that so far. Let's pause for a little while. I'll be back in a minute. 